Hey, Lowenders, this is Low86 here with another video. Am I right? Hi, everyone. I want to welcome a very special guest. You guys might have heard of her. Her name is Vivian, and she is my beautiful Chinese wife. Chinese. I have to, I have to point that out because everyone's like, why do you have to why do you have to say she's your Chinese wife? Do you have an Australian wife? More or more like a Thailand wife or a Vietnam. Oh, a Thai wife. wife. I could really get exotic here. Mm -hmm. I had to go for a, a simple old Chinese person. You had to go for a simple American, right? Mm -hmm. Now we talk about a lot of cultural differences. That's definitely a thing that we talk about on this channel, am I right? Mm -hmm. And cultural differences. I mean, you can. There's a lot of channels out there that talk about current events or news and things like that. But cultural differences are probably the we're the most well-versed at talking about this because of how many things we've had to deal with. Yeah. Whether it's your family, whether it's just me and you and our <laughs> little petty little arguments about who's <laughs> right and who's wrong, uh, why cold things are bad for your body mm -hmm. and uh, all that kind of stuff. Me and you have had a lot of discussions. I won't say debates so much. We, we get along pretty well. I attribute that to your seven years abroad. Uh, that really helps. I think. And I think you know about my background too. I, exactly. I was going to say, I think another massive thing that helped out in our mm -hmm. relationship was the fact that I lived in China because I think we'd, if you hadn't gone abroad and I hadn't lived in China, we'd have a lot more arguments about what is the correct way to do things. I think the conclusion is we know each other. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And that's actually a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. The most important thing in everyone's life, uh, other than being alive, eating, sleeping, things like that. To me, at least, call me romantic, but I say it's love. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. I didn't say it with you. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I think it's love. I think it's just one of those things that makes human beings human. It's mm. a human attribute, right? Yeah. I, I don't think animals have the, you know, the, the capability of love that humans can have because of the bond and intellectual bond and, and mutual conversation you can have with another human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. And I mean, like, there's a lot of debate on this topic about whether certain cultures pair up well together or not. But I think we are the living embodiment of the fact that it does work out. It does work out. We have two kids now, uh, <laughs> both upstairs right now, yeah. both upstairs right now. And we're just waiting to hear that cry. <sighs> I just passed her down. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, wanted, I wanted to say something very important before we get into this topic. And the first thing I wanted to say was the fact that this video topic, this video, was made possible by not a sponsor. I'm not making any ads here. It was made possible by Patreon because on Patreon, uh, I've been doing these polls where people get to either vote or um, give me video ideas mm -hmm. and they overwhelmingly voted for this one. Another video idea that we were supposed to, they were supposed to vote on was you trying every different cereal in America? I was so pumped. So was I. I was like, dude, I get to eat cereal. This is <laughs> we're gonna like, like I can 50, try cereal. Fifty bucks of cereal. We're gonna we're gonna have a great time. And eh, eh, eh. they they did. But a lot of people voted for that, and they're like, that's gonna be awesome. But overwhelmingly on patreoncom slash six they voted for this topic: the definition of love in China versus the definition of love in the West. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go uh, through some comparisons. Mostly, we're gonna focus on you. Uh, <laughs> The reason being, I feel like most of my audience is actually not Chinese. Can't go on fa or YouTube and Facebook, all kind of stuff in China without a VPN. So most of my audience is English speakers. Now, shall we begin? Mm -hmm. Okay. First off is a person. This is a little bit weird because it's not like we rehearse for videos, mm -hmm. but Usually we can take a uh, take a second to be like, okay, let's uh, let's do that part again. Let's just say that part again. Can't do that right now. We're live. Um, as a person, Vivi, mm. <laughs> to I you, yeah. <laughs> I know. I just had to clarify. Um, as a person, to you, what is the definition of love? And I'm not talking about Chinese people yet. I'm talking about as you. I mean, depends on what level of love, though. Family love and. Uh partners love and what up okay well let's start off with the familial obligation of love your family oh <laughs> uh drop us a word bomb thing, <laughs> sorry <laughs> i impressed myself I, I mean like um to me family family love because i was like raised in a really traditional canto family mm -hmm. my parents love is pretty harsh i never get like even i was little i never get held but i know the fact that my parents love me because you know mm. just that's supposed to be and right. um so to me family love is like you need 
even you don't say it,、mm-hmm. you gotta do whatever you got. You you gotta take whatever you got. You gotta do whatever you have at to just like provide、mm-hmm. and、uh, to care, right? To make sure、uh, the person you love in the family satisfy. Okay, and, so living、uh, for other people's satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that like, yeah, that that's the way I grow up, and apparently I even I I think because you always complain about like I don't really say I love you that much, and I don't really really yo, do too yo, much. Yo 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 yo. I, I don't really、uh, do too much lovey dovey thing, but I think that I don't think like, I've ever whined about that. You say it sometimes like I say I love you more than you do, and blah. That's just kind of... when I that's just when I need a little bit of clout. I just need a little bit of you know you know like <laughs> I got I, I I love you a little bit more than you do. So、uh, can you do this for me? You know. Shut up. Anyways,、way. um, that that I think it's the way I how I grow up. I think that's love,、sure. just like self selfishless, selfless,、yeah. selfless way to like contribute. Sure, sure, I understand. So let's delve into、um, love in general and romantic love. And I'm gonna ask you a question.、Mm. Tell me about your first crush. This is gonna break my heart. Your first crush. How did you feel? Like, what was that feeling that you knew? Oh yeah, I I think this is the love feeling that I've heard about. I don't really have that. The first crush I have is like、uh, when I was in high school, and I saw. A, the, a, a topic aside, my type is like those flower boy kind. It's like tall and prettier than woman kind. You like very effeminate males. <laughs> Well, I should say you liked and back thin, then. wicked thin, wicked tall. It's like you really picked your match. <laughs> and then I saw that dude, and he was like one grade higher than me, and he lived right next to me.、Mm-hmm. So I was just like every single time I saw him, like I walk with his friend, and then like in front of me, and we always like bunch of girls just like hanging out back there, and、um, you know. Just giggling and trying to do something. I was like, "Oh man, I I hope I I I think I'm probably in love." <laughs> okay, so that was like your first like infatuation, little crush,、mm-hmm. little crush, right? Yeah, and then like end up trying to like you know give her give him something and try to get whoa, to know you chased him. him. Yeah, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Now,、uh, that's just a, a funny little cute story about your crushes. But like, <laughs> what to you now? What is what does love actually mean? I think it's really bizarre to me. I think it's I I don't know. Is that because of the age?、Mm-hmm. To me, it just like, am I happy with、okay. this person? Okay. I I have a theory. Before I get married,、mm. if that sounds really stupid, if I trap with that person, at least like there's no entertainment, there's no anything, even there's no food. In the island, will I handle that man? <laughs> Can I still like survive with that person? Right. For at least just at least one week. Okay. Can I do that? I seriously thought about this, like to my ex boyfriend and you. I was saying like, absolutely, absolutely, you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, I guess I, won, I know, obviously won that battle. I don't、I'm、need anything, just you. <laughs> So, so, that, so I think that's love. To pick apart your little anecdote, like you're saying that you have to put yourself in a mental position to think: if everything was gone, if I lost all、mm-hmm. everything,、mm-hmm. would I still want to be with this person? Would、yeah. this person make me happy? Okay, that's really interesting. Actually, that's you know what I was gonna say what my definition of love was, but、mm-hmm. I don't think I can top that. That's really good. You're lame. <laughs> I, whoa! I just feel like most people out there don't need to hear a Western definition of love. I guess to me.、Um, To me, it's a little different, and this is where the I, I think the Western aspect comes into play, and that's I dated a lot of people before I decided to get married. I never put myself in a position to say like, "Oh, if I was trapped on an island, would I be happy with this person?" I just I think kind of meeting so many people and being romantically involved with a, a large selection of people when I was younger kind of made me realize what attributes I'd, I'd prefer in a partner. So by the time I met you, it was kind of locked in. I was like, you know what, this is what it, You know, a lot of times, like in my first couple relationships, I would make excuses as to why、um, this person would act a certain way. So maybe my first girlfriend would 
you know, she'd ignore me or she'd uh, choose to do something else rather than spend time with me, or she just wouldn't show any sort of compassion towards me. And, you know, I would say that's just how women are. That's just how girls are. And that's, that's what you do. You make excuses. This is just how it is, right? So I think after going through all those relationships, I was in a position where I was like, you know what? This Vivi, this Vivi girl is like, she's got it all, you know? She's a friend. I don't have to make time out of my week to go want to spend time with her. I actually prefer to do that than anything anything Aww. else, right? You don't have to say, oh, you know, this has <laughs> been together for like a bazillion years. This is gross. <laughs> don't be like that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of what my definition of love was, or at least um, the definition of, of wanting to be in a full commitment with someone, Rick Astley style, you know, full commitment. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> um and that's why I chose you. And that's that's why you chose me as well. Now, those are our two definitions of this thing. But what we're here to talk about is actually the societal definition of love. Uh, I don't think I, I speak for everyone. Every time I try to say, this is a, how I think the West is, everyone's out there being like, that's not how I am. I only dated one person. That's bullshit. No, you shouldn't, you shouldn't date a billion people and, until you pick one. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, I want to bring up the actual definition of love within Chinese society. So not just you, right? Mm -hmm. So People surrounding. Them. Right. So as an average Chinese person, if you said to them, are you in love or what is love? What would they, what would they say? I mean, like that's really, you know, like to our generation back then, it's kind of a little bit lame when you're trying to say, are you in love? Mm -hmm. It's like, Love is a thing that, like, back then when we are in school mm -hmm. and then the people are more pure about, like, less concerned about right. this and that. And then there was something like, I feel like I am, I'm in love. But by the time we go out to work, mm -hmm. all I can talk about, but I can hear about, like, do you actually love him? And he said, well, he got car, he got house. He got decent jobs. Mm -hmm. He's stable. He mm -hmm. treat me well. That's the only thing I hear when people say like I'm dating someone. Right. That's right. like where is the love? It's like, and then my mom's quote is, "Love it's nothing." By the time you're facing tiny yen, which means like the the basic living uh, um, material. Mm -hmm. For example, like money. You don't have right. money. How can you survive? When you obligations and okay. responsibilities come into play, yeah. she's saying, your mother, I remember saying this, love is dead at that point. You're not in love with your partner anymore. You're just your part their partner. Yeah. When I tell my parents and uh, everyone about you, and then, of course, my friend was saying, like, is that have a lot of money? I was like, no, I make more. <laughs> we always go into these videos. And then... Um, <laughs> It, it does does his family have money hmm. like they're separate they don't use it's like to us it's like oh our family is mon have hmm. money then we have money yes and then but you guys is like even the richest of rich probably they won't give their kids money depends right so like like you know that's so different mm -hmm. and then they're saying like oh what does he do does he have a house mm -hmm. and then like back then my mom said my, my mom said like our may she got uh four daughters mm -hmm. each daughter after they get married the guy give them give give her how much mm -hmm. and then he go to brag about that in front of my mom mm -hmm. and ask my mom how much you gave us and my mom's just like so mad. It's like nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean these are cultural things, right? And you just, you know, just from I'm not, I'm no like psychiatrist, right? I'm mm -hmm. not like a anthropologist or anything. But mm -hmm. what I can take from that is it's so much more important that your family is on board mm, yeah. than actually what you feel. Mm. And you got to make sure that this guy has got everything. You just said a car, a house, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, not what he has, mm -hmm. but his family, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why your family kept asking this question, Are my is my family rich? My family would absolutely help me out in a bind, but I'm independent, I make my own money, I've had my own jobs, and so I was you know, 15 or 16 years old. So that idea of independence is very much n removed from Chinese culture. Mm. Um, my parents wouldn't be able, like, here, have we're gonna buy a house. Here, we're gonna, you're not gonna work for a couple years? Oh, that's totally fine, we'll take care of you and your wife. That'd be laughable. Mm. 
and I think I can speak for most people in America that that would be a ridiculous prospect. You wouldn't ever consider taking your parents' help on something like that. You get married when you're ready and when you can, you know, be financially independent. So yeah, definitely a difference in that respect. It sure. doesn't mean that like the butterfly loving Davi feeling it doesn't exist at all. Right. It it doesn't mean like that, but it's just like nowadays people are more realistic. Okay. I yeah. feel like definitely that I think the lovey dovey feeling and I'm sorry to speak on behalf of China, but I think it's more commonplace now than it was before because people have more. So the idea of like maybe in the 60s and 70s, the idea of having uh, financial stability in a house and stuff would be really, really important. Still very important today, yeah. but because people aren't starving now. Means but they, they still can... like house and car. You Isn't that crazy? Job. Yeah. They still is uh, like the first priority. But it's not still not like like innocent little schoolgirl, right? Right. But like if you go out to work and people, that's the first priority apparently. Yeah, and and there's a thing like I feel like as a Westerner, you know, again, sorry if I'm speaking on behalf of everyone out there, but if I go out and I um am trying to find a girlfriend, right? Mm. I might have my own expectations for what she does, who she is, right, and who I who I'm going to get along with. Mm -hmm. Um. But there are certain attributes about a person when trying to find a mate in China that you look out for. And we cover the man, house and car, right? Money. Mm -hmm. What about for a woman? What is a guy, he, what must he have in a girl when he finds one? A woman? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, really, really traditional. Back then, it's like she got to be, a, not have that many relationship, pure, like a white paper. And a now <laughs> you can just, it's not a bad word, maybe it's all right. Nowadays, like people don't really care because mm -hmm. like they, 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 they care. They not care that much, not that much, especially in the, 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 the area we grow up, like Guangdong area, they're more developed and not that tradition. I don't think a guy would completely reject a girl because she's she's not a virgin, but mm. it's definitely a plus. That's for sure. A guy's not going to want to be with a girl if, with tons of boyfriends. Yeah, that's for sure. Like you don't want your girlfriend to be slut. Nobody wants. Right. <laughs> well, but let's not drop the S word over here. <laughs> but the thing is like, if you like only request for a virgin now, it's like that this doesn't it, Yeah, exist. yeah. Uh, statistically, it would be very difficult. Like young, young people, they boyfriend and bro girlfriend, they already live together. Mm. That's like really common thing. So like, it's not a thing anymore, but to a girl, people like guys, of course, expecting hot girls. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, they, but people actually, a lot of family more willing to uh, accept like the woman have a stable job, which means they mm -hmm. prefer like teacher, mm -hmm. like kindergarten teacher. Oh, that means like, she benefits have, time yeah. off low salary it's fine yeah yeah that's fine because like still china still is the society that like you know women don't need to work too hard mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like if that's a point that you quit your job take care of your kids that's your thing that's what i was gonna say is actually there's this it, it's so difficult to talk about gender roles and things like this in today's society mm -hmm. uh particularly in the west uh but i wanted to say that Everyone's got the, and I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people have got this idea that, you know, when Chairman Mao said women hold up half the sky, that women in charge go getting, go get our hardworking women that are just, they're almost on the same equal footing as men are. Mm -hmm. And the expectation for them is to go out and work and work hard and earn mm -hmm. money. Yeah, and I and I just disagree with that from what I've seen in real life. I do think women in China work very hard. I think in some cases work harder than men, but I think the obligation for them to do that is nowhere near the pressure that a man has on that, on that front. Right. So for you, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to use you as an example for you to go and get your master's degree, get your MBA and find mm -hmm. a job and try to work your way up that corporate ladder. You know how hard that was. It's hard. And why was that? I mean, like they have a lot of concern. First, woman gonna get married and then to take care of the kid, so that take over a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And then later on, it's like you need to social with your clients right. and this kind of thing. Woman couldn't do that. That's what they. It's think. a man's world. Yeah, that's a man's world. And then like this and that. Like usually, like if we have a similar, if that's me and the similar level of the dude, mm -hmm. he got a job. 
Right. So that's what I was trying to say is that that obligation um, it's actually just easier for a dude in China mm. to be in that work position, to be in that ladder, mm. right? Mm. Whereas for a woman, do you, you know, your backup plan is you, you can get married. You can get right? yeah. and that's what your parents wanted for you. I, my parents, the first thing I said, mom, dad, I, I feel like I want to get a master's degree. I want to just make myself, improve myself. Mm -hmm. I think it's useful for my future. My dad said like, and there's a Chinese quote called 女子无才便是德, means like if the the less educated the woman is, mm -hmm. the the better it is. Right, right. Because and that's like thing. you don't need to win, uh, mm -hmm. you don't need to win up to like for example, I got a master's degree. So in China, they suppose like if you, you need to find a master's degree mm -hmm. or you need to find a PhD. So the whole um the the the, the volume is getting mm. small. Right. So if you're uh, middle school or what's it called, as long as you're a woman, <laughs> right. you, you're you okay looking, the man would take you. Right. Now to get back on the love thing, um, this whole definition of love, I think we've clearly defined as passion in the West, passion for another person is a mutual bond. And in China, it's more of a deal. You make a deal with someone and you decide that that's the person you're going to be with. And plus that's more like family involved. In the When the family is involved, it makes the that deal so much more important and those attributes and those things about that man or woman so much more important yep. to where the people step outside and start, they maybe are not marrying out of love. Even today in 2019, when people have more financial mobility, they can do what they want. You know, they, they're, they're not poor, they're not starving to death. Mm -hmm. So those things should be less important, but that generation is holding them back, right? Mm -hmm. But this is my counterpoint to that. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about this because of conversations we've had. And I think America and the West in general gets this rap in China uh, amongst Chinese people as open, um, high divorce rate, lots of infidelity and cheating. You know, you watch the movies and that's what you're gonna see, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The clear distinctions in the West does this about China as well. Mm -hmm. Based on area, you go to a Bible Belt Christian type area, I'm sure the infidelity rates are probably going to be lower. Mm -hmm. Very religious, conservative people, right? You go to somewhere that has a lot of people from different cities that come together, maybe in New York City or LA, of course, there's going to be more open type relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Young people finding their footing, meeting a lot of people and stuff. By and large, I would say Western culture is more open to multiple relationships for a marriage. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, there are a lot of people that cheat on their spouses and that there's a reason that that is portrayed in the media so often. However, China gets the opposite. Chinese, uh, people look at China and they think that is a society where people are very conservative. They don't mess around. They don't get divorced, right? And all of that was fairly true until fairly recently. And you were telling me some anecdotes that I found were very, very interesting amongst your classmates, your coworkers and your friends. Mm -hmm. What's going on with them? I mean, like you know, every girls, especially the the, the girls, uh, the the people who actually born in the eighties. Mm -hmm. And um, by the time we get like to the, okay, so our standard is when girls is twenty five, they start to become like slowly become leftover girl. So the family gonna start pushing girls to get married. Mm -hmm. And guys also. Mm -hmm. It's not, not leftover. They just feels like, oh, my son need to get married. Hurry up, get married, have kids. And then we can take care of the kids. And uh, um, so that the, the guy can just go out to work. The wife can take care of the kids. And the family, just big family, right? So usually it's just mo most bizarre thing is like the family push the young, dumb couple get married mm -hmm. and they don't know anything better mm -hmm. and by the time the guy in the society start to have a little bit like money and stuff i can do better than that right <laughs> you know right. So and then they, th there's a regret and also like but nowadays the society to the point that like we are independent women why can we do better than that that fat lump right right right, <laughs> and right. then um, it's not as like, you know, so on, there is a lot of attractive thing out going there. Like this couple, uh, those couple, uh, get married. It's out of pressure. Mm. It's out of like, you know, material mm. out of like 
everything that convenience mm-hmm. is not out of love mm-hmm. even they probably at the very beginning they have, they have some feeling for each other like the dude keep throwing money mm-hmm. and buying Gifts. bags and this kind of give bell buy and just like bell buy means to like buy things to win a woman give over. you the most romantic thing he can ever read from the book and movie and they give right, that right. to the girl but at the end of the day still they said like passion's gone like when they face the reality facing the reality and facing the family issue just like why sure and this is another thing that i caught flack for so many times is saying that chinese men cheat on their wives and girlfriends and mm-hmm. that's it's not something i'm going to back down from it's something that i can say that some of some people i know would ne- absolutely never do that mm-hmm. but yeah. the culture and society around ktv's drinking going out in business deals and kind of doing things together to earn each other's trust mm-hmm. leads to that sort of behavior but it's something i didn't really see women doing until now and that's why i brought up i'm not going to say your friend but someone you know mm-hmm. um married with children and is now trying to get advice from you about how not to cheat on her husband <laughs> yeah and that's not one case it's happening quite bunch. often now and i just think it's really interesting because I don't have any friends, you know, from from America that mm-hmm. have ever screwed around on their wives. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting here women, Chinese women now cheating on their husbands. Yeah, the, like that's tit for tat though. Mm-hmm. When man is like expecting to cheating on their wife and mm-hmm. try to, you know, do something. And usually the like there's a those those bad men. <laughs> <I don't laughs> that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> those bad dude you know what what kind of woman is their first target hmm. marry woman and have kids so you know you're why? saying guys that want to sleep around yeah are looking for they, married women with they kids. they don't want to have responsibility oh. and then the woman like it's like those women they want to break out hmm. they do, don't want to trap in that like a like depressed mm-hmm. little 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 bubble but the meanwhile they don't want to get divorce mm-hmm. they have kids sure and those kind of thing so if the they got too t- tempted to do something bad mm-hmm. if the dude just want to dump the woman and then the woman couldn't say anything sure sure i'm seeing so much of this now like a huge jump in this and i think it is just a pushback women now have money they have the respect in public mm-hmm. that they didn't have before mm-hmm. so if their husband's going to go screw around mm-hmm. then why shouldn't they too yeah so it's like a different set like mm-hmm. you said but i see so much of this you know wechat groups mm-hmm. I've, i'm in like probably like 50 chinese friend wechat groups and stuff in every single day i probably get like three to five videos of someone busting in a door and they find their wife sleeping with another dude and they beat the crap out of mm-hmm. them or vice versa you know mm-hmm. and this is just this thing and i don't want to take this out of context i don't want to Say so just because I see these videos at Salmonon right now mm-hmm. in talk shows, in society, in our friends, that the culture of infidelity and cheating may be a product, maybe a product of the fact that they didn't enter a marriage based on mutual. So I blame them on one child policy because, like, you know, when you have a lot of kids, mm-hmm. you don't have that much, uh, that much time to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Like, think about it when you have one kid, two two parents Mm -hmm. staring at one and give you every attention and every pressure you have like that driving all the kids nuts sure of course that makes a lot of sense and then they are like little emperor and they don't know how to survive even even women it's not just the little boys Yeah, both of them like think about both kids Hmm. you're putting like adult kids together what right. can they do? Yeah, I, I hate to say this, but a lot of Chinese people that I know didn't fully mature until they're after 25. When you meet kids, like especially college students in China, a lot of times, you know, I do know some exceptions, obviously, but a lot of times these kids act like they're 12 and well, they're 21. Guilty as charged. I remember <laughs> I I am a single child. And I remember back then when I was like a study in Macau, mm-hmm. my parents need to all the way drive like uh, four hours Mm -hmm. go there in order to like just buy me box and box of like food just worry about i'm gonna go starve to be fair you could take you were taking care of yourself but they still treated you like a kid like they said once you're a kid you're always kids so but the 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 mentality making all most of the like single child in the city they they can never grow up 
Sure, sure. Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even think about that, adding that you know possibility. And just by and large, I think that as much as I wanted to go in this video and say the attitude towards love is changing in China, I think on paper it kind of is because people are more willing to go date around a little bit. Mm -hmm. But by and large, it's pretty much the same. You enter a contract and feelings are hurt. And now the fact that you can get divorced so easily in China means that you're seeing the divorce rate skyrocket. A lot of people cheating on each other now. And it could be for a multitude of reasons, but it's very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say if you are a, a Western male or a Western female going to, and you're going to date someone from China, they're probably not going to, to be like that because if they're willing to, to step out of their safety zone and date a foreigner, mm -hmm. they're probably going to have different ideals on how things are anyway. But, you know, societal differences are a massive, massive thing for sure. And thankfully we didn't have to deal with this problem because <laughs> we actually do love each other, believe it or not. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, anyway, any closing words before we open it up to questions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this kind of topic just like give us more comments and give us some hints and probably we can talk about it. Oh, yeah. I wanted to say thanks to the patrons. I'm not going away, but um, I want to say thanks to the patrons that actually voted on this. This is something I was interested in talking about, although I wanted to eat cereal. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Let's just, you know what? Just because they didn't, that topic didn't win doesn't mean we can't do that next, right? Vote for that. <laughs> vote for that one. Get on patreon.com slash lobby six and vote for cereal. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go uh, open it up to the super chats. And I'm going to put on my glasses for that. Wow, I got quite the rash. Yeah. What's going on? I think I ate something that didn't agree with me. Mm -hmm. I think it was that rice you cooked me. What'd you put in that? Allergens? <laughs> All right. Um, John Lunger says, blessings and good fortune for the new baby. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. And she will be on a very uh, a video very soon. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm going to have a sip of, and I got a beer actually right here. Uh, go ahead and read that one, Jordan. Great content as always, C-Milk and Vivi. How has the perce perception. perception of the local people changed towards you after learned their language so jordan thank you so much by the way um in the it's difficult to say how their perceptions change because when you don't know the language you don't know what they're saying i said i i'll say this i should make a t-shirt of this quote you will be happier in china when you don't speak chinese because you walk around everyone's all smiles and everything's cool everything obviously gets more interesting when you can speak remember language, we but... got a friend called beard beard yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Beard, if you're watching this, we're about to put you on blast. Uh, Beard is the nice, probably the nicest person ever in my life. He's like the most moral sweetheart little mm -hmm. boy. Little boy is older than me. Um, but he, we were, we were walking around some park or something after on a mo motorcycle trip, me, you and him. And some family like just smiled or something. They're having like a family get together. A long, a oh, reunion. and then like th th he have a conversation with right them. he but just the walks problem, over and starts chatting to them yeah but the problem is they're just trying to tell them uh, the, the the main reason they're trying to say is like oh we're doing bbq we're eating so they meant like just go away right but like he was oh just we're like, eating here he went to us it's like they're inviting us to the bbq <laughs> so he goes over and he's like let's go join them and we're like here we know they didn't want to eat with you <laughs> anyway, my the perception has changed in that like a lot more respect goes to you as a foreigner that can speak Chinese. Absolutely more respect, um, but you're still kind of weird. Like most people don't expect you to be able to speak Chinese. Um, I've said this story a few times, maybe not on video, but um, I was in an elevator and this woman and her husband were in there, and she turns to her husband and she goes, "I thought foreigners were supposed to be handsome." <laughs> and I turned around. And Ouch. Said, Thanks. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, usually it's nice stuff. I mean, you, I, I'm probably like a six out of 10 or something, but I walk around China and I, you hear handsome all day and you're like, well, I had to you, madame, you know? Uh, anyway, thank you so much. Uh, Daniel Pike, he gave me one of these. Do this. California, no, no, no. California. No, no, no. Um, it is, by the way, guys, Daniel, you open this up. This in China, in China means kind of the same thing. It's like cool, like hang 10, like rad. I'm too old. Um, <laughs> You're too red too. I'm too red. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in China, it means Leo, which means six. Mm -hmm. Leo, Leo, Leo. Six, six, six. For some reason. Leo, Leo, Da Sun. Yeah, in, like in gamer lingo. And 
whatever. Right. So people say, Leo, Leo, Leo. If you see six, 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 they're not calling the devil. They're not some summoning Satan. They're actually six just is saying, a good lucky number in China. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Why are you um, sure of me? Sure can mean like, yes, I agree with you. Whoa, whoa. Slow down, boy. This uh, snapping. Nick, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey, C Milk, any advice on weddings for a Chinese Western couple? Location, having the family fly around the world style and other tips. I'm very much bitter towards this subject because your mom went to a fortune teller <gasps> and said that we couldn't have our wedding on a certain date, which meant my family couldn't come to China to our wedding. <laughs> it was more important to listen to some poor ass, dirty woman on the road tell me that my family can't come to my wedding and I have to be with a bunch of strangers. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, actual tips here. Uh, location, I think I mostly it's in the banquet halls, you know, like a place where a lot of food yeah, people what can be served. Seriously, whatever you want. Remember, again, our friend, Beer, he just like have a wedding. <laughs> he got married in a go-kart go track. Yeah, go-kart track. Yeah. I mean, like you seriously man up and do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Nick. I really appreciate it. And style and stuff. I mean, the Chinese wedding. Do you, not wear the emperor do clothes. There's literally no our, reason to do it. You guys should go back and check our our our. Don't go back picture. and watch our wedding and, wedding. And look video. at him. He's do not like search Loudy so Six funny. wedding. <laughs> um, no, honestly, you'll get laughed at. It. You think you're gonna like? Uh, not. I was. I was gonna say something stupid. You think that you're gonna make people happy because you're like doing Chinese culture, but actually, everyone's just gonna piss themselves laughing at you. Yeah. And number two. Um, you're gonna go look back on those photos and videos and you're just gonna freaking hate yourself. I just yeah. recently looked back. Do a Western wedding. I wanna even make if it's a conclusion that I'm pretty, you're pretty messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I carry my shame with pride. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Uh next up we got Matthew Robinson. Congrats on the baby, guys. Thank we did it. Thank you. I, I did it. <laughs> So I wasn't there. I had absolutely nothing to do with this child. <laughs> no, when I was delivering you, nothing to do with that. I was the one in pain. <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. Anyway. Uh, oh, we got serious Wumos. We haven't had Wumos for a while, but, you know, they're they're back. Uh, Mad Ara, will you ever make a, a video about China's dam building projects and their implications? Um, I think there's a ton of videos on that. Unless I'm back in like the, the damn regions, if I was riding past them, I would definitely cover it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. I actually recommend a book called River Town by Peter Hessler. Um, he was there when, before and after they put the dam up. And like, I was there hundreds too. and hundreds of, yeah, we're not in Chongqing. Yeah. Hundred, the, oh, were you? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? When I was a kid, I, I went there. It just because my parents know about they're going to build a dam, then we have a long trip and take the boat like take uh, go through the river it was amazing and then the next oh, yeah. time we go back there and you just like so. everything got destroyed it's not just destroyed entire villages of hundreds of thousands of people were submerged not when they were in there obviously they got relocated but um modern day Chongqing is kind of like a compilation of all the different towns mm -hmm. that were submerged yeah I still it's remember back then there was a place called just because I'm a kid so that's the most uh, unforgettable town called uh, Fengdu Guicheng. They, uh, it's it's really weird. Uh, off the topic, that little 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 town, it's mm -hmm. just like in the middle because the uh, the river is huge, right? Mm -hmm. They're in the middle of the river, so it's a little little island looking thing. Oh wow! So it's surrounding with the all the always surrounding cloud, would never have sun. So it looks Sounds depressing. It's as hell. really creepy. So <laughs> that's why they got they call Guitan ghost, oh, ghost town. town. So they have a lot of like a, uh the, they ha have a lot of traditions. It's like when people walk in uh, but when people call you from the back, do not turn around and then that dude need to go in front of you. If not, that probably is a ghost or whatever that that, that is. sounds pretty fun. It's really fun. But the thing is like that. Now. It's gone, and then they relocated that place to somewhere else. It's just not not the same. Of course, not the of same. Course. But that place is absolutely fascinating. Madara, thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, definitely read that book by Peter Hessler. It's called River Town. I don't know if you have already, but anyway, Grady Gills, thank you so much, bro. He is a patron himself. Thanks thank you so much, you. Vivi. Take this and buy something cute for the girls. Don't let Aww. Matt spend it on beer. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I will not spend it on beer. I don't buy beer that often. When I do, I make sure she also gets some too. She's actually more of a cider drinker. <laughs> um, were you? I bought you a cider today, but you don't even have it. 
Yeah. I literally look like I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I must have had an allergic reaction to something. That's crazy. Maybe it's this camera. Does it or look this bad in real life? Just, not that much. But yeah, you have your camera. just alcohol rush. I'm not Chinese. <laughs> well, every single time you drink, you just look like that. And then even you. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Just put me on blast some more, baby. I really appreciate it. Uh, Ralph. Oh, thank you, Grady, by the way. Um, Ralph. Here. Here, have money. <laughs> we will have that money. Thank you thank so you. much. Ralph. Very, very much appreciated. Um, oh, anyway, you're a cider drinker. Why do you like cider better than beer? Because clearly beer tastes like way better. Because cider is sweet. That makes sense. But there's some sweet beers. You know, you like shandy and stuff, like those lemonade mixed with They're beer and stuff. They're technically sweet. <laughs> so you only like sweet stuff, basically. Uh -huh. That's what yeah. you're trying to say. Yeah. Bubbly <laughs> you, and sweet. You, it's so funny because when we first got together, you hated drinking so much because you got like puke drunk after a shot of I beer. I can't drink. <laughs> um, but then you gradually started like asking to drink. Which I thought was awesome. I, I don't know. I gradually loving the bubbly feeling. But actually, to be honest, though, uh, what's it called? So that getting satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it doesn't have to have alcohol no. in it. I feel like you kind of like that loose feeling, and you know, you know, relax. I you always ask like, me to buy you champagne. I feel it's not like champagne we're made of money. Champagne is different thing. <laughs> Champagne's actually not that expensive, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression I was a kid, I was like, champagne's like a hundred dollars a bottle, but you can buy champagne at like Costco for like five bucks. Oh, I it's love not that bad. One. <laughs> we pretend like we're rich we sometimes. Got <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy like crab on sale. Like buy well, one, get one that's free crab. Not cheap, though. Yeah, but still it's cheaper than it it's could be. Amazing. And then we'll buy like a five dollar bottle of champagne, and then we take photos and we're like, we're rich. <laughs> We've got this. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun times though. It's fun times mm -hmm. for sure. Um Somebody said, I like your $25 hat. That means my brother's in the chat. <laughs> get out of here, boy. You get out of here, boy. Um, oh, by the way, this this hat is for the Rams who are in the Super Bowl. Uh, shout out to the Rams, all you Rams that are watching there. Uh, big fan. Actually, my, my main team is, uh, is the Chargers. But I wanted to bring this up real quick. You have been watching football with me. Do you like football and why? It's pretty fascinating to, to see. I am <laughs> so surprised because every girl I've dated in the past didn't like football. And you're straight from China. You're like sitting there with the boys watching the game. And you're like, oh, why did he do that? And I'm like, happy to explain. You well, know? I adult well. <laughs> She's even like naming players and stuff now. She knows all the jokes about Philip Rivers and all his like 10,000 <laughs> children. You got another kid, I guess. <laughs> This will actually, somebody said, will this be your first Super Bowl? Actually, it will not be your first Super Bowl. You watched the Super Bowl last year, uh, but you didn't know. That was probably the first football game you ever watched. Was yeah, last year's I, Super Bowl. I watched the Super Bowl, yeah. yeah. You didn't know, you didn't really know anything. Now you have a good understanding of it. Mm. So are you, uh, you going to push for the Rams? Good. Go, go, go. Patriots fans, I mean, as much as I appreciate you watching our videos, if there's any Patriots fans out there, like, just don't even bring it up. There's no reason to bring it up. You know what I mean? Look at your face, <laughs> Garcia Family 4 says $4.99 to say my wife is a doctor in a South African accent. <laughs> oh man, my South African accent, I don't know if I can do it. It's just going to sound like a really terrible British accent. Um, I guess it would be kind of like... Tell Winston to say that. <laughs> my wife is a doctor. <laughs> I don't know, that sounded really... I'm sorry. I'm not very good at accents. Except, weirdly enough, I'm pretty good at... Um, Russian accents, but I'm not going to do that for everyone. Cold nuclear. Uh, hello from Britain. Hoping to move to China and Shanghai. And I find you one of the reliable sources of information. Thank you so much. Actually, in China, you know, they salute like this. The kids salute like this. Whoosh. You remember doing that? Need to do, do oh, this. Yeah, it's A little like bit this, right? Front, right. And then see, I'm more pro. <laughs> You're freaking Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, cold nuclear. I uh, appreciate it. And if you're going to Shanghai, good pick. I mean, it's a it's a nice city. Definitely more cosmopolitan. You're going to find it much more comfortable than most of the most of the places you could go to. Nice, nice pick. Um. Anyway, enough about football. Even though I just want to say go Rams. Um. Oh, just just before we stop the football thing, um, we were in a bar in my hometown, and. You would think <laughs> that no one would care about who was watching, like who, who was playing. And the Saints and the Rams were playing, right? 
And I got like everyone was pointing at me. They're swearing about me at the bar. They're everyone was Saints fans. And we're up in the, the Northeast. What do you guys do? Why do you care if I'm a Rams fan? The super hardcore like Saints fans everywhere. I mean, fair enough. It's a great team, but like you're in the wrong place, right? As am I. Uh, Lehman, Nihao, are you guys coming to East Coast for meetup? Um, this has been a very, very rough ride. We were planning on doing a sub meetup in New York City. We planned, me and you talked about this like a million times. We're like, let's talk, let's go, let's have a fan meetup. But we just had the baby. You just had the baby. Um, and everything <laughs> yeah, is leading up to that. So it was kind of really bad timing for this whole thing. And as you guys know, we're leaving. Uh, we're leaving here, leaving this cold, wintry hell hole. Absolute. So awful cool. place to be. I'm going to miss my family. You know, they've helped out for the past month or so uh, with a kid. And I really appreciate them. I appreciate everything they did. They've been super awesome. But I really do not appreciate the fact that it's like freaking zero degrees outside. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Snow is cool once for like a couple of days. I can't believe back then I was like so naive. Was like, oh, snow is so cute. First so time romantic. I released you into the snow is the first time you saw snow. You're like, yeah. Yeah. Now you're now like, it's like, I would not miss that ever again. You're freaking dying now. I, to be fair, I can't stand it either. It's getting ridiculous. Um, it's difficult to enjoy life when it's, you can't do anything outside and the yeah. windows are closed all the time. Uh, Tom Van Horst. I have been dating a real Macanese girl for a while. Those are rare, by the way. Real Macanese girls because the population is only like half a million. And then there's a bazillion Chinese people that move there. So that's interesting. It seems girls from Macau are really different from Chinese. Is there any explanation for that? You are perfect to explain this. She lived in Macau. I mean, like, they got, like, if she grow up there, that, that inference is just, like, te technically European. not even, yeah, European. Depends on what kind of family she's from. And, you know, there are some really traditional, this decent but mind-opening one. Just, like, right nice girl but right. there are a bunch of just european you know girls doing european traditional relationship stuff you know um, it's just like a lot of i don't know how to say it. for the for the few people out there that does that don't know what macau is mm -hmm. um it is a portuguese colony that was full of portuguese people and people that grew up under portuguese rule even if they look chinese mm -hmm. Um, and it was handed back in 1999 back to China, but it still has a border, still has its own laws. That being said, the culture is still super, super, super influenced by um, Portugal and mm -hmm. Europe, more so than Hong Kong is influenced by England. Mm. They got the language, they got the, you know, the, some of the eating habits. Macau, people are chilling out, laying in grass, drinking beer, watching soccer. It's mm -hmm. very much European, even if they look Chinese and they don't even speak Portuguese. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they why. grow up there, they, uh, the, like, you can tell Macanese girl, they pretty much more adult their, you know, Western lifestyle and also like slow pace and open-minded. But sometimes it just like, you know, you can find whatever. They act like a European girl. But right. in Hong Kong, they're more Hong Kongese. Yeah, I mean, the, the Hong Kong girls I know. Um, I they mean, have we their have... thing. They have their thing. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> I, again, it's so dangerous to talk about stereotypes because of who, you know, you don't know who you're going to piss off. You know, there. you got, you guys, if you guys want to know the difference between uh, a mainland Chinese girl and a Hong Kong girl, go back. There is one. We actually did a video about that. Yeah. yeah look up um, Chinese girls versus Hong Kong girls, I think. Mm -hmm. And we got you, a Chinese girl, and yeah, your Wang. sister or your cousin, Wing, yeah. using Chinese isms. And your your cousin uh, Stanley as well, mm -hmm. and you guys were explaining the difference. And mm -hmm. Stanley it was like in a hundred percent agreement with you, <laughs> and Wing was furious. So if you guys want to watch some real, I was just sitting there in the corner, like getting ready to like, I don't know, have to have to have to kick someone out or something. <laughs> Hilarious video, Hong Kong girls versus mainland Chinese mm -hmm. girls. I think that was a really fun video. Anyway, uh, Tom Van Harst, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Jim Dispro. Keep up the good work. Jaya. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, I think you probably should. Sure. Um, we are going, I, I have 10 minutes left on the clock. I said I'd cut this off in an hour. Um, Vivi's going to take like one or two more questions. 
And then I'll wrap this up. Okay, They're guys. So if you want to pop in super screaming Benji baby, we're gonna <laughs> yeah. be out there. We're so. gonna have to go deal with it. Um, <laughs> if you guys, uh, ten minutes on the clock. If you guys want super chat questions answered, pop them in now, and we'll get to them. Uh, Robert Score, thank you so much, dude. That's super generous. China and trade war. Are they getting it? Do rank and file Chinese people understand our side of the disagreement? Did I state my questions in a nice enough manner? Manner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no there's no formalities here, Robert. Um, from my perspective, China is definitely getting the uh, the raw end of the bargain here. And uh, then it's not undeserving. Know, do you know what Chinese people think? What we are punishing Americans. <laughs> Right. Go I mean, for it, China. The the way I would look at this, Robert, is to completely ignore both sides of the media. <laughs> Don't look at any American media on this. Don't look at uh, Chinese media on this if it's sensationalized at all. If they have headlines like, we're sticking it to them, China's suffering, or the, vice versa, America's suffering from the trade war, you know, throw those in the garbage and look at real economic data. The American economy currently is is doing okay. Uh, China has recently released some figures that do not match up with the projections. And yeah, I mean, from the Chinese friends I talk about, uh, business, especially import-export, is very, very bad right now. Uh, would you agree? Not going to say that. No <laughs> comment. <laughs> She's not going to comment on that. Um, but I'm in regular contact with all my friends in China. And yeah, uh, nobody's buying the news. Uh, if you're trying to, talking about a non-businessman down the street. You like might, my you know. parents. <laughs> right. They're not in business, right? They're in the government. Whereas you talk to someone that actually relies on trade with America, they're going to tell you a different story. Like my parents are saying, like, Chen and she doing a great job by making our country better. Mm. So just no like, comment. No comment. Uh, thank you so much, Robert. Um, my phone. My phone. Please accept this. Ram's going to lose dirty money. <laughs> well, God damn it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? $2 to make the Rams lose? Well, I'm blaming you. Bl blame it on you. You didn't even put your real name down there. Oh, you have no one, no, one to, no one to blame. Thank you so much. I shouldn't say thank you. No, go away. Go, 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 go in a ditch. Go sleep in a ditch. Uh, you China 420. Love your vids. Don't stop. Oh, you Chia. I read those China. Uh, I love you. And don't stop leaving these uh, amazing comments. Appreciate it. Are you yawning? <laughs> <laughs> what? Gonna... Have you ever seen someone yawn on a live stream? I'm not yawning. Don't point it out. Go away. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a little chat later. <laughs> um, excuse me. I uh, appreciate it. Uh -oh. Wandering Marine veteran. What? You, you skipped my skip super my... chat. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry, dude. Um, it's so hard to catch up with these things. Leave a normal comment. I'm gonna keep my eye out for it, and then I'll read it. Okay. Thanks. They'll get me arrested in China. Remember that girl, a 16 year old girl who got arrested for humming the national anthem? You see that? Jimmy FZ, what is Wing up to? Why don't you tell him? Working, dating, being a normal girl. Dating? They're going to be disappointed to hear that. She has a boyfriend, doesn't she? Well, she can be single the whole time. Wing single for life. <laughs> Wing, I hope you're not watching. We love you. I miss you. Um, yeah. Oh, Wing. she gonna visit us. Oh yeah, she is. She's coming over, right? Eh? And we can uh, grab her and get all our super chat. She hates open. when I. She used to like be okay with being on camera, and then she started reading the comments. <laughs> and now I don't. I don't put her on for for views. I seriously like want her Hong Kong perspective since I don't live in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, and she she speaks good English, so I put her on camera. But she, <laughs> I think she reads into the comments a little too much. <laughs> and uh, obviously, there's some real creepos <clears throat> out there. Which, mm. as much as I love Wing, I don't get the fascination. Um, I get the fascination with like, yeah, there's going to be guys that like her, but I don't get the fascination with the like bizarre cult that she's created. You know what I mean? Like there's like Facebook groups about her and stuff. It's really? Yeah. Super weird. Whoa. Dude. So I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, you like who you're going to like, but it's, it's a little weird. It's a little <laughs> weird. I'm going to see if I can find that guy. Um, that guy's comment. I feel really bad. What was his name? His name was wandering Marine veteran. Uh, see if he popped it in there. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum, bum. Okay. I'm going to say bye-bye to you guys. Even I don't want to. I don't yeah, wanna... we're going to... Uh, I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> One more. Uh, Excelior E. Did Wing ever have a wing woman? You know what wing, a wingman or a wing woman is? Yeah. Yeah. 
Does she ever have a wing woman? Did no. you ever hook her up with anyone? No. no. I can't. My uncle going to beat me up. Oh, yeah, dude. Wing's dad is scary, man. <laughs> dude, he's super hardcore. Yeah. He's super intense. <laughs> he makes you feel like a woman. <laughs> dude, yeah. It's like, because you can't. I know in Chinese culture, you can't, like, try to stick up for yourself if you're younger than someone and they're in your family. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like whoa dog like <laughs> calm down bro <laughs> yeah he still treats his kids like you know very much like they're he's responsible for their safety even though they're in their like late 20s now mm. anyway we're gonna wrap this up here we want to say thank you so much loveners you guys are super awesome uh if you guys missed the video it'll go live right after this so let youtube do its stupid encoding thing um uh, might take a little while to pop up but you guys can watch it in its entirety. The first half hour was the topic. Last half an hour was the Q&A. I very much appreciate you guys. We're going to have a much more professional setup for the next live stream, that's for sure. Mm. Right now, we're kind of dealing with a very, very horrible moving situation. So wish us luck on that. Wish us luck in the snow. Wish us luck with our babies. Uh, wish us luck with everything else in our lives. And we appreciate everything that you do. If you want to vote on topics and all kinds of stuff like that, go to patreon.com slash allow86. I want to say thank you so much, Lovers, and we'll catch you on the next one.